Good morning all. I was watching a Big Clive video the other day and he'd uh, built a sign using shift registers. I think it was a slot machine arcade sign. Uh, shift registers and LEDs. And I thought, I want to play with shift registers. So I've wired up uh, five of these 74HC595 shift registers and a little uh, 555, actually it's a 7555 CMOS uh, timer running in sort of a stable clock mode. And they're currently shifting data uh, from left to right. You can't see anything because it's just shifting zeros because uh, the clock input pin is pulled low. Now with this switch, I can briefly pull the clock input pin on the first chip high, and then those ones get shifted down the whole array and drop out the end. I can do a little short pulse, I can do a long pulse, and that transfers from left to right, or I can do a whole series of pulses, and they transfer from left to right. And uh, I can also just hold this button down, and ones are pouring in on the input, being shifted through to the output, but of course you can't see anything, because it's all ones. If I let go, zeros start passing down the, the shift register array. Now, I have broken a couple of rules here. I mean, you may have noticed that there are no current limiting resistors for the LEDs, and that's because, well, there are 64... No, there aren't. There are 5 eighths, uh, 40. There are 40 LEDs here. And I thought, well, 40 resistors is just going to be a pain in the neck. So what I've done is I've gone for 3 volts. Uh, the CMOS chips are happy at that voltage, and it keeps the uh, current in these LEDs to a sort of manageable level. They're quite bright, but um, everything seems to be working fine without current limiting resistors. Now the second rule I've broken is a bit more difficult to explain, but it has to do with the way I'm clocking the shift register and the latch, because these shift registers contain three elements. There's a shift register um, sort of here, not physically, but uh, shift register, then there's an output latch, and that means that you can shift data through these registers without actually seeing it on the outputs, because you can hold previous data in the latch while new data gets shifted through the shift register, and then you can pulse the uh, latch enable, and it all just instantly appears on the outputs. I'm not doing that. I'm um, clocking the latch and the shift register at the same time. And then there's a third element, which is the output enable, which actually turns the output pins uh, from tri-state, I presume, to the one or zero to pass the data out. Now I can show what happens if I uh, change the output enable. All the output enables are pulled low with these wires. So let's get this right. Let's pull this one high. So this chip is now not output enabled. And if I pass data through it, you can see that when it gets to this uh, set of eight LEDs, it just isn't being shown. It's passing through the shift register fine because the data I send in is passing through that shift register and carrying on down the array. It's just not showing up on these output pins because these are in tri-state, so there's no current flowing into the LEDs. So that's the output enable. Let's put that wire back so that it output enables properly. I've got to try and get this in the right place so I don't blow everything up. But uh, yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, that's fine. So here's the data sheet for the 74HC595. And if I scroll down a little bit, you can see uh, a functional block diagram. And on here, you can see there's an eight stage shift register. Then there's an eight bit storage register. So this is how you're able to store data in the storage register while the shift register is being updated. That's if you don't want to see the changes on the output. And then there's this three state output driver. Now I've pulled this pin, uh, output enable low, it's active low, so you need to pull it low in order to activate the three state outputs. But the thing I've done, oh, the other thing I ought to mention is that I've pulled uh, master reset high on each chip, because if you pull master reset low, then you just force zeros into uh, all the register locations. So they're pulled high, so I don't have any problems with reset. The thing I've done which is really wrong is that I've put the clock pulse for the shift register 
I've tied it to the clock pulse for the storage register. This um, SHCP is shift clock pulse. STCP is storage clock pulse. Now you shouldn't really do that because it creates a race condition. If I clock the data into the storage register at the precise same instance as I clock the shift register, then if a, a, one of the shift register locations is in the process of changing from a zero to a one, I'm clocking the storage register at exactly that same moment. So I don't really know whether I'm clocking a zero or a one through. So that's a bit naughty. And you can see here from this clocking diagram that they actually recommend that um, when the shift clock pulse goes high, so this one there, for example, where there's an arrow going up, that you actually put the inverse of that clock into the storage uh, register clock pulse, so that when the shift pulse goes high, the storage pulse goes low. And that way, you don't get this race condition where you could be clocking either a zero or a one, you really don't know, into the storage register. So I didn't bother with that. Um, you can see that I've linked the shift clock pulse and the storage clock pulse together with these links. The two pins just happen to be side by side. And I'm feeding one clock train, this is actually the output from the 555, down these brown wires through these little links on down the next brown wire through the link on down the next brown wire. So I'm clocking the shift registers and the storage registers with the same clock pulse. And I don't seem to be having too much problem. So the race condition um, is probably not actually happening, but uh, it's just a precaution. You shouldn't really do this. Now sensibly, the HC595 has most of its outputs on one side of the chip. So I'm able to uh, run my line of LEDs in a nice continuous line. Some of the older chips would tend to put outputs sort of crossing backwards and forwards between one side and the other. The exception is Q, oh, what is it? I think it's Q0, which is up here. So this link wire here on each chip is taking Q0, which happens to be on pin 15, down to this side in order to drive the first LED. Um, if they hadn't done that, they could have used all eight pins on this front side to drive the eight LEDs, but then ground wouldn't have gone to pin eight, which is, uh, pin eight's a conventional place to put ground. They'd have had to move it to the other side, and that would have been unconventional. So what they've done is they've put seven outputs on this side and one output on the far side, but in such a position that you can route it through the chip and out to create all eight in a nice neat row. So you can do things like this. So you can see here on the uh, pin diagram that Q1 to Q7 are actually on pins 1 to 7. Uh, Q0 is over here on pin 15. But it would be a relatively easy thing to route that in under the chip, across and out, to get Q0 up in this position so that all these are in a nice neat line. Now this circuit kind of works a bit like a very primitive oscilloscope, or at least it would if I could get these LEDs to sit in a nice neat line, but they just won't. They just insist on forming this kind of staggered array so you don't get a nice smooth movement. But you can, uh, not really an analog oscilloscope, but it does kind of work as a, well, a very primitive logic analyzer, I suppose. If I put a short pulse and a long pulse, and a short pulse and a long pulse, you can see those pulses sort of stored temporarily in the storage registers of these shift registers. Poor man's logic analyzer. Now you often see these 74HC595s on boards like this, where there's a seven segment LED. Uh, let's just see if we can see the number there. Let's get my torch. Yeah, so there's a 74HC595. And there's another one next to it there. Can't see it very well, but uh, HC595. So there's a couple of HC595s there. Um, and what they typically do here is they'll route the outputs of one to the segments of uh, one of these seven segment LED displays. And then the output of the other one will drive the digits. And then what you do is you, uh, you shift in and then latch the data for the segments 
um, when one of the digits is selected on the other shift register. And then you'll shift in a new pattern of segments for the next digit, another pattern of segments for the third digit, and another pattern of segments for the fourth digit. And the whole thing just cycles around very rapidly so that your eye can't see the changes um, to multiplex uh, um, a whole load of digits onto one of these seven segment displays. So uh, there it is. There's the uh, 74HC595, a very popular shift register, particularly in uh, Arduino land because uh, you can either use it in this sort of live shift register mode or you can use it in a shift and then latch mode uh, for driving displays. Cheerio!